uh, you know, she's able to handle firearms and she knows uh, she knows ice when she sees it and all that sort of thing. Is that right? No, probably none of those. But uh, the news this morning said something about a couple of prisoners from Elena Jones of all places escaping and they're on the run. Uh, anybody here recognize anybody? No. Uh, but Joan assures me that uh, that she had nothing to do with either of those two women whose names were mentioned. Uh, there's Bible says by the way, but the wrong one. So that's just, I think we're ready. Yes, here we go. And you can probably operate that as I give the nod. Thank you very much. It'll save you a little bit of a hassle here. Um, let me open my notes. But I just want to uh, take up what you said, Joan, about uh, having a baby. Not easy, is it? I fainted when we had our first one. <laughs> Didn't I? <laughs> Poor Joan had to do all the work. I was, I was on the floor. <laughs> No wonder doctors don't often allow husbands into the uh, delivery room. Anyway, it all worked out well after that because the time that the second one, our daughter Annette, the price of the jacket here this morning, then mum, when that she was being born, the uh, power went off at the hospital and I was the one who had to go downtown and get the municipality to check the fuse and yes, sure enough, it was their fuse downtown that was broke, that was fused. Yeah. Uh, when I got back to baby and it was born, our beautiful daughter. So that was great. Uh, I, by the way, I want to ask you to uh, start thinking a little bit about the celebrities you might have met in your lifetime. Not the ones you've seen on stage, but the ones you've actually spoken to, spent time with. I yeah, prepared a devotional about a month ago at a prayer meeting that we go to on a regular basis at Deception Bay. And uh, I got thinking about celebrities for some unknown reason. It's a word that was never around 30 years ago. We talked about film stars and pop idols and uh, you know important figures like that. But we never use the word celebrities, as far as I know. Maybe I'm living under a rock somewhere. But celebrity, to me, seems to be a relatively new word. It's an appropriate one, isn't it? And uh, I just wonder what celebrities you might have uh, come across in your time. I've got a list here of probably seven or eight that I've met in my lengthy lifetime. Yes, make the hair, it's white. Yes, I am getting old. Uh, all right, anybody would like to tell me who they've met? No celebrities have been met in this room, this prestigious. Ah, uh, Carmen, over there in Canada, was it? In Montana? No? Yes. Oh, that's the United States. In New Zealand? Yeah? I had lunch with Charles and Heston. Oh. Wow. Oh, you actually spoke to him? Yes, I asked him for his autograph twice. Wow. He said no, because he wouldn't buy his expensive book. Um. It was enough to pay for the lunch. Oh. Anybody else? Yeah? Marianne. I sat next to John Farnham in during the yeah, Olympics in the Olympics. John Farnham. But I didn't talk to him. No, right, but you sat with him. Yeah. yeah, very good. Okay. All right. Eddie Charlton. What man? Eddie Charlton. Oh, Eddie Charlton. I've got to know Eddie Charlton. <laughs> hey, we are only about one. No, come on, come on, Carmen. You got somebody else? I was in the LA airport about 15 years ago. I went to my dad's funeral. I was in a different section in the airport I've never been in. I heard this click, 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 click of these little heels and I turn around and there's Prince. Prince. With his great big oh, African-American uh -huh. bodyguard. And I'm asking the young girls who probably don't want to ask anything. That's uh -huh. Prince, isn't it? And I was standing like, for me to this lady here. And that was my Prince experience. Excellent. Yeah, right. Holy. And brushed with fame, yes. uh, all of us. I, I was a teenager when I met Wes Hall. Some of you are old enough to know the name Wes Hall. I'm calling it the school. Yeah, he was outdone by Dennis Lilly in a later era, of course. But Wes Hall was one of the fast, well, was the fastest bowler in the world, yeah. a West Indian. And he came to Kingaroy High School, spent an hour with us, 
And uh, the next day I wasn't there, I, I was home on the farm, but the next day he threw a cricket ball over the peanut silos, yeah. you know, just to show that he could do it. Yeah, he was a great guy. But uh, others, a name that you wouldn't know, Sammy Dagger, and it does sound rather vicious. D-A-G-H-I-R, he was a Lebanese. And we used to go to church with Sammy at the Christian Missionary Alliance Church in Beirut in, uh, ooh, what's suppose the 1970s. And uh, then he became famous, I suppose, if you'd like to use those words, because he was a faithful servant of God, uh, just serving in churches in wartime Lebanon. And he actually spoke at Billy Graham's funeral. Maybe was it last year? Yeah. And then Nancy Cajo. The list is fairly long here. I've got the time set on my clock here. So uh, Nancy Cato, you may not know that name either, but she wrote All the Rivers Run. Some of you will have seen that miniseries. And as a result, there were a lot of Brents born after that. Uh, yeah, we had our honeymoon, Joan and I, at uh, Lake Catharaba, not far north of here, and Nancy Cato was in the same motel for a week, mm. and we'd play Scrabble together in the evenings, no doubt she won. Yeah. Well, there's others, Sheikh Rashid of Sharjah, Haley Mills, I could go on, but I'm going on already, so I better stop. We're going to get down to the text. Of course, the other celebrity that I have met, and that I hope everybody in this room has met, is Jesus Christ. Have you spoken to him lately? Jesus Christ. A very important figure in terms of world history. And he is coming back again. And he will only come back for those he knows. So it's onerous upon us, I guess that we know this Jesus Christ if we don't want him to pass us by at that time. I uh, met him in 1969 on a forest reserve about 100 kilometres from here, a place called Gallon Gown. Anybody ever heard of Gallon Gown? Mm -hmm. uh, anybody have, probably have heard of Jimna, a bit further south, and then Kilcoy south again. Uh, but I was 12 months on that forest reserve and uh, worked with an Aboriginal guy. And uh, he took God seriously in his life and told me that I should too. And he quoted one night Matthew 6. He was sharing his Bible study with me and boring me to tears. I was a good boy. I, was a, I, I never did anything wrong, never used bad language and never drank particularly, all I did uh, a couple of years before that, and I've never really got drunk since, well I've never actually really touched alcohol since then, if that's bad. Uh, lots of other things that people might say that uh, are, are wrong, are sins. I never actually did any of them, so I took it for granted that I was going to heaven when I died, until John Stanley quoted Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. See first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things you need in life will be added to you. See first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God wasn't even second or third on my list. He was way back there in the background somewhere. Thought of him occasionally. Heard his name mentioned a lot in forestry, as you can imagine, but only as a swear word. See, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things you need in life will be added to you. I had to take God seriously at that point. I yeah, prayed that Jesus would become Lord and Master of my life, and that was in 1969. What year is it now? That's a long time ago, uh, and I'm still growing in my understanding and my acquaintance with this Jesus. And I hope you are too. I challenge you to uh, get to know this Jesus. We'll go to the, yes, that's the one that I want. This, we are starting the Christmas story from the beginning, so it could be a long sermon, couldn't it? Because how long ago was that? That's uh, probably 6,000 years ago, if you take Bible chronology uh, at face value probably 6,000 years ago or more. 
but most Christmas stories uh, focus on Matthew, the early chapters of Matthew, and Luke, the early chapters of Luke. But, uh, of course, the Christmas story starts way, way back. In the beginning was the Word. What a name. Uh, anybody here got a nickname? The Word? It was a, a special word that uh, John used when he was communicating with Gentiles, with Greek-speaking Gentiles. They understood what logos meant. It was uh, a kind of a reference to the, well, the thought that initiates everything. And uh, it, was, it, it was a thought that, of course, initiated well beyond the human comprehension. A very technical word, but, uh, of course, the Hebrews, the Jews understood it as well. The word, the message. God communicates with his creatures. Have you been listening for that communication in your life lately? Well, a good place to start would be this book. And of course, it is a pretty onerous tome and a pretty onerous task. Joan and I have read right through in the last couple of years, three chapters a night, and we're back. We've just completed Genesis again, was it last night? And but by the time you get to Leviticus, most people keep up in disgust. Wow, oh, well, this is tedious reading it ever and no relevance to my life at all. So a good place to start is in the New Testament. And John's Gospel that I'm looking at now is, a, is an excellent place to start. And as we look at Genesis 1, we see that we're being introduced to the Word, who is God. Not just is a God, as the Jehovah's Witnesses would like us to believe. That's where the new A, no, what, what do they call their translations? Neil, you're the expert. There is new World Translation. New World, thank you. The New World Translation. Uh, translators, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. But uh, good Greek grammar, uh, leaves the definite article and the indefinite article out of that last uh, phrase. The, the word was God, full stop. Only one God, and that is the God who is the creator of the world. In fact, he is the one who was in the beginning with God, the creator God. In fact, verse 3 suggests that he in fact is the creator. This word, this Jesus we're talking about, is the creator and therefore the one who demands our attention. Has he got your attention? He ought to have. We ought not to be uh, just thinking of him at Christmas time or even at Easter time, but it ought to be a daily discipline to ask God to be front and center of our lives. The God who is the creator, the creator God, the God who is divine, who is divinity. Yes, I've met divinity. He's a celebrity worth celebrating, don't you think? And uh, he is the God of gods. We'll go to the next segment. And uh, yes, another few verses. In him was life. This is the creator of the world. He was the creator of life after all. And the light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man, in, I put this one in brackets, this uh, sentence in brackets, because it's a parenthesis here, talking about this man uh, who's writing this uh, gospel, by the way, uh, was sent, there was a man sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness of uh, no, not the, not the author of the gospel, sorry. He, this, this guy was beheaded, wasn't he? Mm. And he came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, and I've highlighted this light, verse 9. It's worth uh, highlighting, worth emphasizing. The true light, which gives life to everyone, was coming into the world and in fact came at Christmas 2020. 
two years ago. I reckon it had to be in about 4 BC. The uh, calendar makers got it wrong. They uh, reckon Jesus was born in the year dot, but in fact he was born before King Herod uh, died. So it had to be before about 4 BC. Anyway, that's an aside. So we're talking about the light. So we've got a couple of words here, three words so far, four words if you include the word divinity, divine, referring to Jesus, the word, the message that is, a bit of background music to the sermon, that's great, yeah. Keep it up, okay, yeah, keep it coming, but not quite so loud. Huh? Silence is golden. You want me to sit down too? Yeah, right. Good. So we've got the Word, we've got God, we've got uh, light, a third word, describing this Savior of the world. Well, he's, well he's, as we see him at the moment, he's going to be the Creator, but we'll see as we read further on, he's also the Savior of the world, light. We all need light, don't we? Have you ever been caught in a dark room? I've been... I was visiting somebody once out at Gatton and uh, I was in a room all by myself and uh, at my age you get up during the night to go to the toilet if you can find it. It was pitch black. I could not see a thing and I must have tripped over a cat or something. I don't know. It, and it was terrifying. It was rather scary. Uh, it, and, and of course I've been to Janolan Caves and they take you down because a guy takes you down and then turns the light off and you can almost feel the darkness. We need light, don't we? But not just the light that our eyes can see, but light that brings enlightenment, brings understanding. That's what we need, that kind of light. And that's Jesus. He's come to bring understanding. We were dead in our trespasses and sins, so Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2. But uh, the light has come. We can see the way now. He has shown us the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life, he said in John chapter 14. By the way, he is the life, and it says that here in this text, I'm looking for it in my text in, uh, in front of me, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. By the way, a lot of girls uh, in Australia have this Greek name. The Greek name is Zoe. Your friends called Zoe? That's uh, English. Well, Zoe is Greek for life. L-I-F-E. And so it's probably a good name to give your daughter. But they've got a lot to live up to, haven't they? They've got to live in the light as Christ is in the light. Yeah. And so have we anyway, whether that's our name or not. We're called to live in the light, to uh, take on the life of Jesus. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness didn't understand it, didn't comprehend it. But uh, it could... By the way, I was listening to the ABC the other morning, and I would have missed it only for the ABC, but uh, you might have heard of the Jewish festival called Hanukkah, or Hanukkah. It's uh, a festival of light, I think that's another name for it, but the word Hanukkah is really Chonukkah. It's from the Hebrew verb to dedicate. It's a feast of dedication. It's not a biblical feast, any more than Christmas is a biblical feast. The Bible doesn't talk very much about the birth, the advent of Jesus. It talks about his person and work as an adult at the cross. We ought to be bigger on Easter than we are on Christmas. But Hanukkah was a special celebration of victory over the Seleucid Syrians about 164 BC when uh, the Syrian Greeks were forbidding Jewish Jews from doing anything Jewish, from doing anything according to the law of Moses. And uh, a fellow called Maccabee, uh, he, uh, I think that word means the hammer, 
in English. But anyway, he uh, got a following together and they defeated the Seleucids and uh, they re-established worship at the temple, uh, a dedication ceremony for the temple. But in the process, they had this candelabra, uh, an eight-stand candelabra. Uh, well, it was an oil-burning thing. It wasn't one with wicks in it, like me. Oh, sorry, that's bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. It was uh, an oil-burning eight-stand uh, candle. And they lit one each day. Because the miracle of Hanukkah was that when they uh, re-established worship at the temple, they could only find one vial of pure uh, uh, olive oil that had been previously dedicated. They couldn't touch Greek olive oil. It wouldn't do. It would be tarnished, but it had to be specially purified oil. They just had enough uh, to, to light one candle. But they lit another one, and another one, and another one. That vial of oil lasted for eight days. And by then, they were able to have their own candles. But it is a festival of light, and it reminds us that light has come. It should remind the Jews that light has come. They are yet to be enlightened to really understand that the light has come in the form of the Messiah that they themselves have been looking for for centuries in the person of Jesus. Jesus, well, Christ is simply the Greek word for Meshach, the Hebrew. Christos is the Greek for anointing, as is Meshach, Messiah. So the Messiah has come. He's brought light into the world. So let's read on, shall we? This is one last section. Uh, yes, uh, he was in the world, and the world was made through him. It's repeating itself a little bit here, but it's wanting to emphasize that Jesus, this word, this life giver, is the creator. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and you knew him not. He came to his own, and his own people didn't receive him, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. But all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave us the right to become children of God. I implore you that you receive Jesus, the light of the world, the life giver of the world. Receive him for yourself. To all who receive him, who believe in his name, to them he gave the right to become children of God. We are adopted into his family. That's why church is so inviting every Sunday. It's not just some religious activity. We come because we know the author of church. We know the one who invented it. We know Jesus. We know the Word, we know life, we know light. We know the one who came to give light and life to us. So, the invitation is open. Receive Him this Christmas time and enjoy church forevermore. Yes, it probably could be a little bit boring for some at times. Uh, and I used to yawn myself through church services when I was a teenager was taken to my parents' churches, and uh, it was pretty dull stuff. But then I met Jesus, and what a difference that makes. Receive him, friends, that he might be your life. Not just now, but forever, for eternity. The invitation is open. Take John chapter 1 home, and make that your homework for the week. Meditate on it, ponder it. And consider it, consider him who is the life giver and who stands at the door and knocks. If you open the door, he will come into you and be your life. So don't you think that now is a good time to celebrate our very own, our very real celebrity, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ.
well, my sermon is up and my time hasn't uh, expired yet, so can I ramble on? No, let me finish. Come on, Joan. Take it away. Take me away. Thank you, everybody.